Hello and welcome back to Pantheon the Geek. She joins us again for another Star Wars Legion. We're, we're up to date now, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, these are the last two box sets we got only a few days ago. Uh, so this will be the Imperial Specialists, and then the next video will be the Rebel Specialists. Um, but this is a personnel expansion. Uh, they're both pretty similar by the looks of it. So it's good to get four models in each. But um, let's uh, get this open. Ooh, come on. Oh. That's it. Right, so that'll be the female officer. That's, I think, the medical Empire medical droid. We've got four bases, which is always good. Uh, the astromech droid. And whatever this guy is, also some sort of comms unit guy. Imperial comms technician. That was a good guess. Yep. Let's have a look. So, yeah, what have we got? Yeah, R4 astromech droid, Imperial officer, FX9 medical droid, and Imperial comms technician. I didn't know what any of those were, I was going off the pictures. Ah. Good for me, eh? <laughs> um, so the rules on here, we've got non-combatant. This means you can't use weapons other than another non-leader miniatures must suffer wounds first. I've also got restore. To restore how many, choose a mini that was defeated during the current round. Place that mini in cohesion with the unit's leader and assign that mini wound tokens equal to one fewer than its wound threshold. I imagine that's the medical droid. Right, so let's. Uh, I'm going to have to put some cork on these bases. We'll take these out first and look how many parts we've got. Medical droid. Kind of looks a bit like a Dalek with lots of arms. Um, <laughs> pretty straightforward, though that looks like it goes together. Um, getting these open now. Okay. Uh, the officer, two arms. Uh, the comms officer, so we've got the big backpack, uh, the big helmet, and uh, his gun. Though. And then an astromech droid, which hopefully we'll see R2D2 in the future. A lot of kill. Yeah. But jelly again, because I won't be able to paint. Um, <laughs> I might well, let you paint him. There's the astromech droid, three parts, main body, and then the two legs, as expected. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and sort the bases out, and then we'll be back to put the models together. Okay, so we're back. Um, I'm going to start with the R4 unit, actually. So we have the Imperial R4 unit. Um, obviously, we've got two sets of legs. One's going to go in that side, one's going to go on the other side. And that will make a tripod and we'll put that on the base. No problem there. Um, the Imperial Officer, I'm going to put the arms on, put that on the base. No problem there. Uh, as I said before, we've got this backpack which only goes one way on there. Um, then we need to fit on the arms. So you've got like the standard sort of fitting that these models have, and that goes on there head goes into that socket and then we have the uh, the monstrosity that is this uh, medical droid so we have this L sort of shape rough L shape, very rough L shape uh, on there that's where this goes I believe not a bit I just don't know because that's the L shape for that and then we put the head on that will stay together pretty well, actually, like that. There you go. It's the medical droid. That's cool. cool. Yeah, I do like that. Um, right, so I'm going to stick these together, put them on the bases, and then we can have a look at the final models and the rules. Okay, so we're back. Breeze sticks together again. So, the officer. I'll be seeing everything there. The comms link and pistol. The comms guy. Imperial comms technician. Imperial comms technician. 
Got the R4 unit. Cool. And medical droid. All very cool. So we'll have a look at this first. So the officer, this is a character card for the Imperial officer. So you, you have two options with the Imperial officer. You can take them as an upgrade to an existing unit, which is here, or you can take them as an Imperial officer themselves, as a, as a commander. So if you do that, they cost 50 points. Again, spotter one. So choose one friendly unit at range one. That unit gains a name token. They get an inspire one. After you rally you step, you remove up to one suppression token from another friendly unit at range one to two and sharpshooter one. Or performing a range attack, we use the defender's cover by one. Unarmed is one black dice. And then there's the officer's RK3 blast pistol, which is one to two range and one black, one white dice. Uh, defensive and offensive surges there as well. Uh, pure officer there, picture and a little bit of a blurb. Um, so that's one option you've got, and if you do do that option, you've got uh, upgrade cards as well. So we've got a Recon Intel, we've got Comms Relay, and we've got Commanding Presence, all cards we've seen before. That comms Relay, that, uh, when you issued an order, you may choose a friendly unit at range 1 to 2, issue an order to that chosen unit instead. don't remember seeing that picture, that was all. Uh, we also have the command cards, so uh, initiative one. Uh, one special forces or operative unit. We've got two random command cards from the opponent's hand. Uh, then we have pin down, two. Two support heavy units. After a friendly or support heavy unit performs an attack against a unit with a face border token, shuffle that token back into its order pool. And coordinated fire. So three corpse units. Uh, after a friendly corpse unit spends an aim token, another friendly unit at range one to two may gain one aim token. That's not bad actually. That Some useful uh, command abilities though. Uh, or if you didn't want to take it as a commander, you can still use her as an upgrade for an existing unit. Takes up the extra personnel slot. Um, so you add one Imperial Officer miniature, your courage is increased by one, you also get an Inspire one, and you also get a leader, because the, that becomes the leader of the unit, so it takes, obviously an officer is going to be higher than like a Stormtrooper Sergeant or whatever. So that's the second option with her. All the others are unit upgrades, so Imperial Comms Technician, you add an Imperial Comms Technician miniature to the unit, and then that unit gains the Comms Upgrade icon. So it didn't normally have one, it then becomes, you can add a comms upgrade to that as well. Uh, I bet you there's a really good use for that, it's escaping me at the moment. Uh, the medical droid, uh, you add one FX9 medical droid, it gains the treat capacity 2, ability to treat 1 capacity 2. Place a wound token on this card to remove one wound token from or restore one miniature to a friendly non-emplacement trooper. At range one, in line of sight, limited to two tokens. There you go. And then finally, we have the uh, R4 astromet droid. So you add one astromet droid to the unit again and give repair one capacity two. Very similar to the medical droid, but is about vehicles. If you have a look at that, I quite I, I can see me using the astromet droid yeah. to keep my ATSTs alive <laughs> or the future transport that's coming out. Um, Future transports? Yeah, the one from Rogue One. Oh. Um, see, you must show me these things. I must. <clears throat> right, so those are the four specialists. Some good tactical options in there. Mm. I need to really think about how to use this guy, though. It's, it's eluding me at the moment. Whether I can get the you know, stormtroopers to move ahead of the rest of them. I don't know. Uh, the moving range of the commander. I don't know. She's cool. Um, so you wouldn't have to use a named character you can just have a random imperial officer mm -hmm. call her whatever you like and then you're not you're not stuck with a named character I like that idea actually I like having generic commanders mm. 
who could be anybody. And then you're not constantly stuck with that. Oh, this is when Han Solo fought. Oh, this yeah. is when the Emperor Palpatine took to the battlefield. And I like that idea. It gives you lots more options for narratives which don't involve characters, <laughs> and and you can make your own story for uh, Star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, or as a support character. So you wanted a cheap second HQ option after you've taken Palpatine because he's that expensive and then at least you've got one to support him. I like that. Cool. Cool. So uh, that's the Imperial Specialists. In the next video we're going to have a look at the Rebel Specialists. Yay! I imagine they're going to be very similar. I think Probably, it, yeah. I think it's kind of like a generic upgrade given to both sides. It'll be good to see though. Although they're probably like 10 points cheaper than... <laughs> the uh, Imperial versions even though they do exactly the same thing Ooh. <laughs> so stay tuned for that yeah. and we shall uh, we'll see you in the next video see you soon bye for now bye